Hey, how you doing? My name is Ryan, and today I'm making some awesome studio renders. I got a question a while back about what are some best practices for rendering out images in studio, and I thought today would be a great day to hop on my computer and show you guys how it's done. So let's load up studio. I currently have on my screen the latest iteration of the art kit. This is the studio model after I made all of the tweaks. Before you even press the render button or go into the settings, I recommend hitting file, save as, and saving a new version of your project file, either as for render or mark it as render. That way you can manipulate and maneuver and hide and move around everything you want all to your heart's content without messing up your original project file. You wanna keep that as clean as you can. So I'm gonna do that right now. File, save as, art mannequin 3.0. I'm gonna save this as for render. So now I'm in the full render project. Now I can move everything around and connect things together. When laying out your project in studio to be rendered, I recommend you turn off snap and collision. What this does is this allows you to kind of move things a bit more granularly. So if I want to stand up these paintbrushes and pencils and put them quote unquote in the case, I don't need to worry about it snapping to the wrong location or going haywire. So there are three different render settings. There's photo reel, POV ray, and animation. Photo reel is pretty self-explanatory. It's a photo reel or as close to real life approximation as if you took the photo of real Legos with a camera. POV ray is just a lesser quality version of photo reel. It's almost the same. There's just not much shine or scratches, surface imperfections, that kind of stuff. And animation is an animation where you can either build it or 360 around your model. Really cool stuff. I'll show you photo reel first and then animation. So within photo reel, we have your kind of viewfinder over here. This is going to be what the quote unquote camera actually sees. And this will be what your render looks like in the end. Uh, I'm going to change my preset from 16 by nine to 1080 by 1080 as well as one by one. Nice square. And then we have our quality, medium, high, very high and custom. So the samples is the amount of times that the program will take a pass at the photo, whether it be light, quality. So the higher the sample count, the better quality your image is going to be. I'm going to do very high. If you know your computer is slower or not as powerful as like a really high end gaming machine, I use a giant iMac for my computer. Be careful going with anything higher than very high because it you might want to keep in mind your computer might not be able to handle that high of a render. So I'm going to do very high or if it can handle it, it'll take a very long time. I'm going to do very high because even on this computer, it takes like 20, 30 minutes to render out a really high quality version of this model, but it's so worth it. For background and light, you can change to a solid color background or a transparent background. I tend to go with transparent so I can add a gradient behind it or any other background behind it later on. It's kind of like a PNG file. You can drop it into Photoshop or drop it into even PowerPoint and make a nice gradient background. Uh, for the floor shadow, I'm not going to add that. I'm going to unclick that. That just kind of gives you some contact shadow with the floor of your model, your base. It can look really good, but if you have things kind of suspended in midair, you don't want it to look like there's actually anything suspended there. So I'm going to change that to off. You have different light settings, building mechanic, asteroid dawn and, and piazza. This is just your quality of light and your position of light. I tend to go with building. I tend to go with right front. If you want your model to be backlit, you could do that. I'll show you both backlit and actually frontlit in this. And intensity, I just keep my intensity at one. Unless you're doing anything really artistic looking, try to keep the light settings pretty, pretty basic. You don't want to overdo it here. Your camera setup, perspective and orthograph. I use perspective and I have it all set up over here. You have your position and scale. You see it as it changes when I move the model around. Your field of view is how much your camera sees. So if I change this to, let's say, uh, one, and I try to zoom out, I have to zoom really far out just to get anywhere close to the kind of uh, image that I want. Whereas 15 or 10, it's kind of like your camera's, uh, like how wide of your a lens your camera is. So 15 is a pretty basic camera lens. And the material effects, this is where photo reel really can look amazing. I want the stud logo, which means that every brick that's visible will have the Lego logo on it and it looks really nice. UV degradation, how much light affects the bricks. So it'll take a sampling of bricks and it'll age them as if a light hit them over and over and over again. Kind of like how 
uh, white bricks can fade to yellow or gray bricks can fade as well. And I can change that. I'm going to have this be, keep it the same, min of 0.15, max of 0.5. Scratches, surface imperfections, looks really good on close up. For farther away, you lose a little bit of that. So I'm going to keep this at 0.3. And I'm going to make this a PNG 16 bit file. That way I can keep the background transparent. So I'm going to hit add to queue. You see it does that. And I'll do one, as I mentioned before, I'll do one right rear light as well. Add to queue. For animation. Here you can change your frame rate. So one frame per second, 24 frames per second, which is cinema look. That's the frame rate that most movies are shown in, except for Peter Jackson when he does his Hobbit 48 frames per second, which just looked really weird. Uh, 30 FPS, which is what most TV shows are. And 60, which is what a lot of high end iPhone cameras shoot at when you have your settings. You can shoot at 60 and it looks like it's very little motion blur because just a higher frame per second count. Uh, building sequence. This is where you can uh, have your model be built either by an auto generated sequence or your user defined sequence. This is why I like to do steps sometimes because if I do the steps correctly, I can generate a really cool looking animation, but I'm going to do it at, at uh, auto right now. I'm going to set the build time to last three seconds and the rest to be five seconds for a total of eight seconds of duration. I'm not going to have it revolve. Render quality, I'm going to make this make this high. If you go very high for this kind of video, it'll take a, quite a long time, especially given the size of the actual file. So I'm doing again, 1080 by 1080, which is a lot of pixels. If you shrink that down, you can get it to be a bit faster. But again, patience is very key here. Uh, background color, you can't do transparent. So I'm going to do a nice white, maybe a little bit lighter. If you really wanted to, you could do a bright green and then green screen it on Photoshop to a gradient, but I'm just gonna go for a nice tasteful light gray here. Degradation, scratches, and add that to queue. Once you have your renders all set up, I'd say try not to use your computer as much during the rendering process as it'll slow down the render itself and it'll take much longer. Set it aside, plug it in, turn down the screen brightness and just let it roll. If you have an older computer, I used to use an old MacBook Air from 2015. The fan will be going very loudly. Don't worry, it's kind of like rendering out an export on iMovie or Fonka Pro. It just takes time and takes up quite a bit of your computer's processing. But once you do have your render done, here's what it looks like. And there you have it, some best practices for rendering in studio. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to vote for the art kit on LEGO Ideas. I've linked that in the description box below. We just crossed 1,000 votes, which is incredible. Thank you so much to everyone who has voted, but we're only a tenth of the way at 10,000. I know we'll get there, just takes a little bit of time. And if you have voted, I have one more thing for you. I started an Instagram called LEGO Art Kit, also linked in the description box below. I'm gonna post pretty regularly some very beautiful looking renders of different artworks, different poses for the model, just really fun stuff to showcase all types of art that can be created with the art kit. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.